Nation, get ready for our next thrilling bout. Three five-minute rounds in the flyweight division. Introducing our first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist who held a professional uh, amateur record as nine wins and three losses, including an IMF World Silver Medal. He's making his pro debut. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 57.2 kilograms, representing KHK MMA in Dagestan, Russia. Give it up for Magomed Idrisov. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of seven wins and five losses. He stands 165 centimeters tall and weighs already 57.2 kilograms. Representing Team Lakai from Baguio City, the Philippines. Give it up for John Happy Feet, Chris Carton. Your referee is Decky Larkin. Phil, once again, this is a fighter making his pro debut. As I said and as we saw, pro MMA is a different animal than amateur MMA. This is a very, very stiff test for this debuting former champ. But as we say in the, the build-up, the fact that Isridov is taking on somebody like John Chris Corton in his professional debut speaks volumes to how well he's thought of in the mixed martial arts community taking on the Team Like High product. It does indeed. John Chris, John Chris Cortone comes out of Team Lakai, one of Brave Nation's favorite fight gyms. Just trying to find the distance with that in and out jab is John Chris Cortone. But Israel beautifully catches the leg, takes John Chris Cortone down, and let's see what sort of damage he can do from inside the open guard right now of John Chris Cortone. Does have that butterfly hook in on the left side. May look to try and elevate the hips of Isrizov with that, has a foot on the hip, usually indicative of somebody trying to spin for an arm bar, but Idrizov does beautifully just to skip into that half guard position. This is very, very intelligent positioning that we're seeing, Phil. I think Happy Feet was trying to get a foot on the hip, an elevator in, create some room and pop back up to standing, but because of his opponent's adroit hips and guard passing skills, it is not possible yet. Idrizov keeping those hips really, really low and Almost like switching between the scarf position. Great job from John Chris Cortone to try and get that full guard back. Maybe in on a guillotine here. It resolve pops the head right out. I do want to say, Phil, I do think the ground game of some of the Team Lakai fighters is overlooked. They, of course, are renowned for their striking skills from that wushu background. And there's a little bit of blood coming out of somebody. You can just see a little bit of speckling there on the side of John Chris Cortone. Again, trying to work his way into that full guard position, framing off. May look to grab that neck again if he can get the knee shield in for the, the guillotine guard. Potentially here, you could also see Idrizov trying to turn this into almost like a Von Flu choke from the half guard. I think this is a setup I haven't seen for the Von Flu before. I think he's going to start with the hands clasped over his head mm -hmm. and then slide them down. That's exactly what he's doing, Phil. That is a very slick entry. Very intelligent. And if he can just get that arm out, and he's pushing down on it. Great job by John Chris Corton to regain the guard. Very, very savvy groundwork there from Idrizov. We see how just how dangerous he can be with a sneak, sneaky suspicion submission like the Von Fluchuk. Phil, they call him happy feet, but he could be called nasty elbows right now. That was a nasty elbow to the top of the head by happy feet. Again, Idrizov trying to just work his way from the half guard position into side control. I like how chilled out and methodical he's looking again. Could be looking to try and set up that Von Fluchuk that we saw. Just forcing his shoulder into the throat and carotid artery of John Chris Corton. And that looks like he's really slowly, methodically putting the pressure on. He may be slipping through into that half, he, into he, the side control. Now. We could see a Von Fluchuk submission here, ladies and gentlemen. Just putting the pressure on. And sometimes before a fighter on the bottom knows that this type of submission's on, they've passed out Kirik. Again, slowly, methodically, you can see just how uncomfortable John Chris Corton is. Again, nice regarding by happy feet. Those feet don't just like to kick you. 
They like to control your hips from bottom as well. He does well to sneak in and get that half guard position, but again, Idrizov trying to undo all that good work from John Chris Corton and advance his position into that side control again. Trying to land a, a couple of shots there. And it's really, the, the first round is really all about, uh, all about the top pressure from Magomed Idrizov, Kirik. I agree, Phil. I've been really impressed with the game that Happy Feet has shown us from the bottom, but I think in the judges' eyes, it's probably not going to be enough to earn him that round. And what he's doing so well is he's forcing John Chris Corton into expelling the energy. He's the one who's going to be at more of a deficit, I believe, should this fight go into the second round, because he's the one who's had to expel that energy, trying to get his guard back, trying to work back into the full guard. Whereas Magomed has had gravity on his side and is able just to lay the pressure on John Chris Corton. Very interesting technical fight so far. And they look to just slide that leg out again, but as we've seen sort of ad nauseum in mixed martial arts, fighters are very happy to stay in that half guard position and work. They are, but that striking is what I think his corner is gonna call for a little bit more of. You do have to play to the judges when you fight. Simply getting on top is not always gonna win you the fight. My guess is, Mohamed Idrisov, when he goes back to his corner, is going to be told to turn it up a little bit in terms of striking. So as we've said, that first round was essentially all about the ground prowess and the wrestling of Magomed Idrisov. Just dominant, dominant wrestling exchanges here. What he does so intelligently, and this being his pro debut is, he's landing just enough shots to keep himself honest in the eyes of the referee. He's landing those little pot shots, but then he's giving himself enough time to advance his position in between those strikes. I agree, Phil, but I think his corner's going to be calling for him to show a little bit more damage. And again, as we've seen in previous fights, right now you can see Jeremy Pakatu in the corner of John Chris Corton. He's going to be telling him to get on his bike, to start using that jab, to implement lateral movement, prevent himself from standing uh, square, and perhaps maybe cut down on the leg kicks because it was a low leg kick that resulted in the initial takedown. <laughs> Referee Deggy the Bandit Larkin gets us ready to go in our second round here. All right, Phil, let's see if Happy Feet shows us a little bit of a different look this round. I think, it, I think if anything, John Chris Corton could perhaps be a little bit more tentative leading into this fight for fear of being taken down. Charges forward with big hands, but then eats a knee for his trouble. Needs to be wary of planting those feet because you could see it resolve just ducking under and getting the takedown. Chris Cortone definitely getting to play the game that he wants to. Got that leg kick off a little bit quicker that time. I'd really like to see him open up with the, with the hands a little bit more. Straight shots are going to be uh, advantageous for him here. Idrisov actually showing a nasty striking game. That's a beautiful job. And then gets caught. Oh, he's he caught him. with a big he shot. He hurt him. Ed Resolve reverts, reverts to type, has that single leg, but a couple of elbows here could be all she wrote if Corton can get them off. Huge uh, credit to Idrisov's conditioning, he was able to weather that. Has Idrisov had enough time to recover? As we know, Phil, headshots, five to ten second recovery. And you have uh, to give credit to Idrisov there, he reverted to type, he reverted to the wrestling, but... Oh. Did he eat a knee there, or was it in as he was going in for the takedown? Scores the takedown beautifully, and this is exactly where he wants the fight to be, Kirik. The relentless effect of wrestling in mixed martial arts is on full display here. And if he was hurt in any of those exchanges, this is the perfect position for him, Kirik. Gives him a little bit of time to recover, get his breath again, shake off the cobwebs, and land a couple of strikes. I do believe Idrisov's corner wants to see a little more action from top. Wants to see some action from that top control. I know the referee does. May even try and set up a head arm triangle from that position. If he can get himself into the other side, which he's done beautifully. Switches the hips into scarf position. And you could either see him trying to go for that Von Fluchuk again or try and skip to the other side and grab that head arm triangle. 
again, just slowly, method methodically working, very much in the same fashion he did in the first round, Carrick. He did, but this is a professional fight. Positional dominance by itself doesn't have huge significance if there was significant striking, and I believe there was so far. And if you're John Chris Corton on the bottom right now, you're bound to be frustrated. You must be thinking, what do I need to do to try and change the momentum of this fight, to try and get that pendulum to swing in my favor? What I think he needs to do is shift his hips away from us, get a knee in, try and pop it up to standing, but he is facing an opponent with exceptionally heavy hips. The problem, of course, with extremely heavy hips is it's hard to do effective striking from them. There's a trade-off there. You can hold the hips down tight, or you can posture back and strike effectively. You can't do both. Happy feet coming out. And you have to give him credit for trying to get out of those positions, for trying to shift the hips, trying to sit through and get back up. But it's so difficult against somebody with the wrestling pedigree of Idrisov. Here comes Idrisov now. A nice knee to the body, nice elbow to the body, and a nice knee to the head. Again, slowly working. And it goes back to what you were saying in the opening package about blanket-style fighters. This is a fighter who's dominant by virtue of the fact that he prevents you from moving. He's like a fire blanket. He, he essentially puts out any fire, any, any impetus you have to do something. He does indeed. Now, I'm impressed to see that in this round, unlike in the first round, he is posturing back to land some effective strikes. John Chris Corton again with those butterfly hooks. Can he do something with them? Can he elevate his opponent? Maybe hit a sweep. But right now he has had no answer to the offensive wrestling of Magomed Idrizov. Just isolates the rest and you can see he's trying to use that to, to land some strikes. And as we've seen, he does get a little bit more, a little bit more active with the strikes as the rounds come to an end. Again, very intelligent for somebody making their pro debut. Very, very smart. We know, Phil, that you're supposed to fight like there are no judges and try to win it the whole, just try and win without thought of the judges the whole time, but that's, that's not reality. Steps over again into side control, maybe trying to have one last crack at that Von Flew choke before the round ends. And surely, if you're, if you're in the corner of John Chris Corton, you, you have to tell him not to hold on to the neck when it resolves transitions into that side control position because he's leaving himself open to that choke. I agree, Phil. I think what Happy Feet's got to do when he's on bottom is create some space and pop up to standing. Looking at the Green Hill replay right now. Walk us through it, Phil. And there you see that. This was probably the, the, the most dangerous we saw John Chris Corton. I think he landed... I think he landed a hook on Ed Rizov that definitely hurt him. It was a nice, two nice short hooks that definitely hurt him. But then that speaks to the, the conditioning of Magomed Ed Rizov, that he was able to recover so quickly, reverted to type with his wrestling, got his opponent to the ground, and from there it was all about his positional dominance, Kirik. There's little question in my mind what we're going to see from Mohamed Ed Rizov in the next round. I think he believes he's won the first two rounds with a dominant wrestling approach. The second round, he was able to posture back, land a heavier ground and pound. I think we're going to see a repeat in the third. Happy feet's got to get on those happy feet, try and circle out, not close with his opponent, and he's not going to win from the clinch. He's really going to have to try and implement some intelligent movement pertaining to the likes of an uppercut, pertaining to the likes of a pop knee to try and catch his opponent when he's coming in for the takedown. We're going to have to see exquisite distance management from happy feet in this round for him to have a shot. Well, essentially, he's going to need to finish the fight. He's down two rounds, dominated with the wrestling in the first, dominated with the wrestling in the second, despite that little flurry he had. And again, he opens up with big shots, rips the body. I think you're dead right, Phil. I think his corner told him you've got to take him out this round. And looking in his eyes right now from across the brave cage, I think he's, going to, he's trying to take his opponent out. And he ducks the head, but then it was off with the clinch. Takedown attempt by John Chris Corton. Phil, I think that was done on instinct and probably not the wisest move. I think he wants to get at distance and knock his opponent out. In a situation like this, what I'd ideally like to see him do is disengage. Try and create that distance and if he's still within the clinch, maybe try and pop a knee, uh, prop an elbow when he creates a little bit of space. Just turn it into a nasty, dirty fight. Edrizov trying to get that trip, has the double underhooks, takes the back with expert proficiency. One hook in, may use the strikes just to try and loosen John Chris Corton up a little bit so he gives up a little bit of space. 
Idrisov has that notorious one-on-one -on, -one on the far side, the so-called Dagestani handcuff. And he's, what he's doing with that so brilliantly is he's taking away a potential base of John Chris Coton, making it so much more difficult for him to get up to his feet. You can see Coton has a hand down there. Just wait momentarily. You'll see Idrisov maybe try and clamp that away or stretch that out on John. Landed some nice shot, and there it goes again. Takes that base away. Once again, Phil, I am impressed to see Mohamed Idrusov not try and be a blanket. He's not just trying to ride his opponent and do as little as he can with his hands. He is trying to land some shots of consequence. Now he goes two on one in that wrist and just pops it out. Could Looking be setting the arm up, choke. Could be setting up that head arm triangle. Trying Try to get past that half guard. If he does, it could be lights out. Now the only thing that's potentially saving John Chris Corton right now is the fact that the cage is an impediment to Ed Resolve right now. If he gets that leg out, it'll be very difficult for him to try and walk around. Ezradov acutely aware of that transitions to the other side where he has a lot more space. <laughs> Serious MMA intellect there from Ed Resolve. Phil, this is a very, very impressive pro debut. You know, it's a dominated guy that's had 12 pro fights that's coming out of one of the most well-respected gyms in the world in Team Lakai. This is, this is a huge statement. This is a huge feather in the cap thus far for Magomed Idrizov. It is, Phil. Chris, John Chris Cortone is not just a gatekeeper. He is an awesome fighter, and what we're seeing here is domination. Just that methodical, constant pressure. As we said, John Chris Corton may be on the bottom there thinking, what do I need to do to do something offensive? Because every time he attempts something, it's shut down immediately by Idrisov. Brave Nation, we are calling this fight from an empty, empty arena for COVID prevention, of course. The sound of these leather gloves hitting flesh is a little bit eerie. John Chris trying to create just that little bit of space try and land some shots of his own. Happy Feet has spent most of this fight on his back, unfortunately. Not by choice, Phil. Again, beautiful rest control from Ed Rizov. Just methodically working, take away any base or pivot point that John Chris Corton is trying to establish. And now, as we come to the closing stanzas of the round, he, he ups the tempo and lands those big strikes again. see that output getting more and more landing those shots and again every way that John Chris Corton tries to turn he finds himself being dominated by Idrisov now landing again a big elbow I want to say as well Phil that I am impressed by that push elbow that Mohamed Idrisov is throwing from top that is of course not a move at all it doesn't exist in amateur mixed martial arts and you're seeing him apply it at a professional level and also spending time at KHK Bahrain, KHK Dagestan. He's training with absolute beasts on a daily basis, like elite level professionals. And he's going to be picking up that, that professional savvy training with those types of guys. That's true, Phil. My guess is he's been thinking about this for a long time, has been training with a professional debut in mind, and we're watching it right now. And then when you have somebody like Brave Super Lightweight Champion Eldar Eldarov in your corner, you know, you, you've got a solid team around you in that case, Garrick. Big strikes being landed by Idrisov to finish. Finishing with a flourish. Boom, no question about that one. There it is. P potentially under the new scoring system, could any of those rounds be a 10-8 round because they were so dominant? I believe the third round was potentially a 10-8, but there's not a lot of those being called yet. I think in a year or two there will be. I think we're looking at a 32-27 round. And again, it was all about that that closing the distance that John Chris Corton was trying to do with the strikes. He was leaving himself a little bit vulnerable by, by not maintaining the distance, by not moving around. And as soon as he planted the feet, as he was soon enough or close enough, Ed Resolve grabbed a limb, got an underhook, and dragged him to the ground. 100%. Mixed martial arts is a game of finding your opponent's hole and filling it. Mohamed Idrisov showed a complete game here. He was willing to stand and strike, but he felt like he was, he felt correctly, that he was dominant in the wrestling department, so he forced the fight to go there. And as we say, an absolutely huge 
Feather in the cap of Magomed Edrizov to take out this Team Lakai product who a lot of people when they seen this matchup initially they were like an 0-0 fighter taking on a 7-5 fighter surely that's a mismatch but no it speaks to just how highly our matchmakers think of somebody like Magomed Edrizov that they're confident that they can put him in against someone like John Chris Cortone and he will not only not embarrass himself but he will elevate his status as now a 1-0 professional mixed martial artist Agreed 100%. And Phil, Irish Thunder, as we're reviewing this fight, I would be remiss not to give it to a big shout-out for John Chris Cortone. Oh, for he, sure. He fought every second of every minute of that fight. Probably didn't come out on top, but he sure fought his heart out. And now to make it official, let's send it up to the man who puts his heart and soul into everything. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Carlos Kramer. Right, Brave Nation, another incredible bout. This evening at Brave 41 in the magnificent kingdom of Bahrain. After three rounds, we go the judges' scorecards. Your first two judges score the bout 30-27. Your last judge scores about 30-26. For your winner, out of the blue corner, Magomed Idrizov!